What's going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I personally did today in the markets. Did I buy anything? Did I sell anything? Am I just sitting in cash right now waiting for opportunities? I'm going to be telling you guys all of that good stuff, as well as showing you guys and breaking down some stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade here in the month of September, in the middle of the month of September here in 2019, Tesla being the top stock that I'm currently watching. So if you guys want to see the Tesla breakdown, there's going to be a timestamp down below in the description box or in the comment section so you can fast forward to that part of the video if that's the only reason why you clicked onto this video. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you do find value in it, feel free to go down below, hit that like button. I would greatly appreciate that and consider subscribing if you want to see further content involving the stock market, investing, trading, personal finance. This is the channel for you. So without further ado, guys, let's just get right into it. Let's do our market breakdown, just like in the beginning of every single video that I upload here. So the S&P 500, ticker symbol SPX, ended up closing the day today up $8.64, up 0.29%. And the funny thing is that we were actually up a lot higher than that um, earlier on in the day today. We were actually up up not a lot higher, but about 11 points higher from where we closed. We actually hit a high at about 30.20, and we saw a bit of a triple top here, which was bearish, and then we ended up closing the day on this little downswing. So it's interesting now, the s and is actually getting close to those all-time highs. We were about 7 points shy today, so if we have another strong green day tomorrow, let's say we have a green day tomorrow, we could, all, we could potentially hit those all-time highs um, in the next 24 hours, guys, which would be pretty, pretty crazy um, in the market. So the Dow Jones now up $45 today, up 0.17%. Let's see how let's see how close we are in terms of all-time highs. We're about, at this point, um, 200 points away from all-time highs, which is at $27,400 about. And on the one-day, one-minute, you guys can see we hit a high today at about $27,300. We triple top there, and then we ended up closing the day off on a little downswing, bearish cross here on the intraday chart, meaning the 50 SMA cross below below the 180 SMA, as you guys can clearly see. So going over to the NASDAQ, let me just double check to see what the closing price was on the NASDAQ here on my phone, guys. We are seeing the futures are showing $8.75 here. Let me just quickly pull up my Yahoo Finance app. Yahoo, not Yahoo, Stas. Why are you saying it that way? NASDAQ was up 0.3%, up $24.79 today. So that's kind of just the overall gist of the market. Very slight green day. Um, we kind of triple topped on the Dow and the S&P in the middle of the day. You guys can see on the intraday on the NASDAQ, we kind of triple topped as well. Um, you know, really in the middle of the day today, heading into power hour, then we dumped and then we got that pretty big gap up here, which I'm actually not too sure why we ended up gapping up. It seems like the ES mini S&P futures gapped up as well and the Dow ended up gapping up as well. So I probably missed some news guys to be honest today was one of those days where I wasn't that active um in the Discord chat, I wasn't that active in the markets in general because I had a I had a quite a busy day today doing a bunch of different things. The truth is, I'm actually in the process of getting a new vehicle. Actually, it's going to be a used vehicle. So I was actually at the dealership today doing a bunch of that stuff, and you guys know how that goes. That takes a couple of hours, so I was kind of out of the loop. So fill me in if we did get any catalysts that I am missing in this video. But let's go back to the the SPX, the S&P 500 here. Um, you guys can see again, we ended up gapping down, not really gapping down, falling down towards the end of the day today. And if we go to the 184 hour chart, we can see here, guys, that we broke out of the resistance 29.90, 29.95, like we talked about in yesterday's video. And we got so close today to testing those all-time highs, we actually broke another resistance at about $3,015 earlier today. But we ended up gapping down, closing down on that, on that downswing, which ended us ended up 
having us close below that resistance again. So right now, the channel that we're in on the S&P is between $29.95 and around $3,015. So watch the futures tomorrow, guys. If we gap up, let's say the futures are up and we're gapping up above $3,015, starting to test $3,020 again, that could be a sign that tomorrow might be the day that we hit all-time highs on the S&P 500, right? But let's say we sell off a bit. We start to dump in terms of the futures here, pre-market. Let's say large caps are going down. Um, we may be going down to test $29.95 as a support. So at this point, you know, the RSI is very overbought. We talked about how it was overbought yesterday, and it seems like that didn't really matter in today's session because the market still moved up despite the RSI being overbought. And a lot of the times, guys, that's how it is, right? One indicator might be telling you this and the markets still go up, right? Another indicator may be saying the markets are going to go down, but the markets still go up, right? So sometimes these indicators, you know, you can't just rely on them, right? Uh, solely. You have to kind of take them, take them with a grain of salt, or at least that's how I personally do it, right? So overall, the markets right now, nothing too crazy, right? We got some news that um, I believe, what was it, yesterday, late late in the day yesterday, we got some news that Trump is going to delay some tariffs, or rather he's going to take the tariffs back. Oh my goodness, guys, I can't believe I'm mi mixing this up right now. But we got some news, good news about the tariff situation, the trade war, and we all know at this point, when we get optimism involving the trade war, when we get some good news, if you guys want to call it that, which it is good news at the end of the day that they are taking some tariffs back you know this ends up pumping the markets up this ends up you know giving the market optimism and gives some more certainty to the market and what the market loves guys is certainty the market hates uncertainty and when the market gets certainty what happens the market goes up right so that's definitely the catalyst at this point that is driving these markets and if we go to the 20 day one hour on the S&P you guys can see it was a textbook bounce on the 50 SMA here on the hourly chart you guys can see it even clearer here that we are pulling back so hey we may end up pulling down to retest that 50 SMA here maybe tomorrow maybe Monday right maybe next week we'll get that uh, pulled down which honestly I can see happening at this point on the S&P because again the RSI is a bit overbought right now so let's go to the Dow very quickly starting off on this 20 day one hour chart you guys can see it here clear um we got another textbook bounce on that 50 SMA just like the S&P we popped up the RSI is overbought now we're starting to get this pullback so we may be pulling down to test that 50 SMA either tomorrow or maybe the next day being Monday right and we can see here again like I said 200 points away from those all-time highs we're trending above this old resistance at about 27,000 dollars which at this point you know is the only uh um support that i'm seeing at this point uh because the dow jones is pretty high up now right we're almost at those all-time highs so if we were to pull down here start to pull down the support the first support that i'd hope the dow is going to hold above is going to be at around twenty seven thousand dollars right and at this point that would be a healthy pullback because again that'll bring the rsi down and that'll give us an opportunity to maybe get into some market etf some large cap dow stocks at a dip right at a dip by here at about let's say twenty seven thousand dollars and are we going to get that pullback who knows, guys, right? Who knows? If we get some good news about the tariff situation again, interest rates, whatever it may be, that might pump the market up in the short term to all-time highs again, despite what the RSI is telling us, despite what these moving averages are telling us, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what I'm looking at on the Dow, the S&P. It's very simple, right? Nothing crazy. These technicals, um, they're pretty simple to understand here. And going over to the NASDAQ very quickly, um, I believe today was the day, or maybe yesterday was the day, that we gapped up above this level of 7 7800, which was a very strong resistance. You guys can see, actually, I do think it was yesterday, but anyway, it doesn't matter. All you have to know is that it did happen, right? But we can see here that there was a strong resistance level at that point from uh, um, April to May in 2019, a couple of days ago, right? In the beginning of September, we got rejected there. We pulled down, but the positive thing is, and I mentioned this in yesterday's video, is that we held this 50 SMA on the four hour chart. That was extremely positive as well 
as we held the old resistance as a new support at around 77.50 and now that we got the gap up we got the pull down it seems like we are holding this resistance as a new support the next sign uh, or rather the next level we may be going to now on this nasdaq future is going to be around $8,000 right $8,050 even right which is the all-time high that we're seeing here so on um in terms of the RSI here the Nasdaq's actually at a healthier range than both the Dow and the S&P 500 as you guys can see on their RSI levels which gives me more confidence in the Nasdaq now to hit those all-time highs um before potentially the S&P and the Dow Jones and let me know what you guys think about that in the comments I'd love to really understand what your point of view is on that so on the 20 day one hour very similar to the Dow and the S&P on the 20 out uh, 20 day one hour charts you know we're holding moving averages we had a textbook bounce on top of that 180 SMA at a higher low from the previous I believe this was a couple of days ago right we hit the higher high so we may be pulling down to retest that 50 SMA maybe retest $7,900 again as a support before continuing to climb or we might get that breakout and if we get the breakout above this level all-time highs are in store for the NASDAQ guys. So overall, that's what I'm watching right now. Again, I'd love for you guys to let me know down below in the comment section what you think about the markets. Did I miss any catalysts? Because again, today, I wasn't really at my computer to be completely honest with you guys. Um, again, I was getting a car in the process of getting a used car today, so I was really just out of commission for uh, a lot of the trading day. But anyway, let's get to the portion of the trading update video, which you guys can probably guess at this point, I didn't really do much trading today. Honestly, I held my swings from yesterday, or really from the past couple of days, which were at V, which are at V, ticker symbol ATVI, and ticker symbol T, right? ATVI is Activision Blizzard, for those of you guys that don't know, and Activision Blizzard today showed a lot of nice movement from what I did do my analysis, or rather from what I saw this morning, right? This gap up was beautiful in my opinion because this gap up showed that there's still upwards momentum right now for Atvi. And let me show you guys what I mean by that on this five day, five minute chart. So you can clearly see that Atvi right now is holding this trend that I just drew for you guys, right? It's moving up slowly, but surely, right? We got the gap up yesterday to 40, um, or rather $56. We got the pull back down to 54. We held the trend, which was a very good sign and a reason why I held it overnight, right? We got the pop up today to 57.50 pushing us to that higher high and now we got the pullback heading into the market close which was actually a higher close from yesterday and it was also a higher low from the low yesterday which means the uptrend is still intact so ideally tomorrow guys at V if it popped up and started to maybe test 56 again, maybe 57. That's where I'd start to add more money to my swing. At this point, I'm only in with that initial 10-20% of my goal position. I got in around, I believe, like 55-10 or something like that on this day. And I'm up not a lot on the position right now. I'm still holding at this cost basis, so I'm up around like 30-40 cents on my position. Uh, and again, this is a hold that I want to hold, or a stock rather, that I want to hold for the next couple of weeks. And the and the really the target sell point, like I've mentioned on these videos, is going to be around $60 initially. That's where I want to shave off some profits here. And eventually, if we do get to 62, which might take a month or two at this point, um, that's where I'd want to just liquidate the entire position. That's the goal at least, right? So T is the other one that I'm currently in right now. AT&T didn't do too much today, right? But overall, it's still holding its trend into the market close, which I really, really like. AT&T, I ended up getting in on this dip yesterday. Not really a dip, but right before it popped, or right, actually right when it popped is when I ended up getting in right around here, right at around 38.10, I believe is where I started to funnel in money. And this is one that I want to hold for maybe a week or two at this point on a positive catalyst, like I mentioned in yesterday's video of one of uh, the, well, I don't know if it's one of the biggest investment uh, or rather hedge funds out there, but a big hedge fund out there with around 40 billion assets under management. They ended up taking a 3 billion, 3.5, 3.5, 
$3.8 billion stake in AT&T with a price target at $60 per share, right? At least that's what they think AT&T is worth. And when the market gets news like that, when investors get news like that, that shoots the stock up in most in most cases, right, guys? And that's what we got here. We got the momentum push from 36 to 40, pullback. That is what opened up the margin of 8%. That's what opened up my eyes to AT&T. And that's why I started to scale in and I plan on holding this as long as these technicals stay in line, right? Ideally, guys, tomorrow, I'd like to see a break out of these moving averages, right, on this five-day, five-minute chart. That would be ideal. You know, if we dump downwards like this, you know, I might have to cut my losses if we do get at a point where we're down, you know, 2%, right? If we get to the low 37s, that's where I'm probably going to cut my losses. But at the close today, we're doing decent. The trend's holding, but again, we're we're still trending under those moving averages, which is a bit bearish at this point on the intraday, on an intraday perspective. As you guys can see here, you know, we started to dump, we broke out, then we ended up closing on the downswing here. But what's giving me faith, like I mentioned, like three times already is the fact that we're holding that trend. So overall, that's what I'm doing right now in terms of my swing trades. I didn't do any day trading today again, guys, because I was busy in the process of getting a new vehicle, right? So that's what I did today. AT&T at V. That is what I am um, personally holding. So let me know down below in the comment section. What did you guys do today? What stocks are you watching? You think the market's overvalued, you know, undervalued, which I doubt anybody thinks the markets are undervalued here. Um, I'd love to know, guys. That's the truth about it. So let's get into Tesla very quickly now. Ticker symbol TSLA. Tesla, I've been getting a bunch of questions on this on Instagram. Follow me down below, by the way, at Stasurfest on Discord and on the YouTube comments, right? A lot of people have been asking me, do analysis on Tesla, Tesla, Tesla. And the truth is, I haven't done analysis on Tesla in a long time here on this channel. So let's just get right after it now. So Tesla, over the past six months on this 180, 84 hour chart as you guys can see we've been trending down on tesla from 350 the high here all the way down to about 176 dollars it lost literally half of its value in the span of five six months which was very treacherous guys that was very bad the shorts they were loving that right the shorts were loving it they were winning the game at that point in time but since this low We've got some good news from Tesla. We've gotten some good news from Tesla. Model 3 production, you know, they're they're introducing some new cars here in, 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 in the next couple of months. You know, they might be turning a profit here in the next coming quarters. And the whole idea with Tesla, in my opinion, as a shareholder of Tesla, as well as a spec shareholder of Tesla, because I still think it's a speculative investment, what I think would be very good for Tesla would be consecutive profit in terms of quarters, right? Let's say we get a year, two years, three years consecutive of profits for Tesla. That's when I think the, the share price overall is going to start climbing up because that's going to give investors more confidence. And it's honestly going to turn the stock from a more speculative play to a more, I don't want to say a value stock because it's obviously not a value stock, but a more, I guess you can say, sound investment because a lot of people have philosophies out there like Warren Buffett, you know, don't invest in stocks that are not profitable, right? So if this becomes more profitable consistently, you know, that would give those investors that follow that principle more confidence to get into Tesla itself. And in my opinion, that's going to push up the stock price. But anyway, let's talk about some short term performance here that I'm seeing that I think is very, very good. We can see the bottom at 176. And as you guys can see from this, this wedge that we were once in about two weeks ago, we actually broke out of the resistance of this wedge, which was very bullish, right? And if I zoom in a bit, you guys can see that. Ever since we broke out of the resistance of the wedge, we've been uptrending, right? We made a higher low here from the previous at 210. The higher low was at about 220. We also held that 50 SMA as a support, which I love seeing that on the four-hour chart, guys. That's very, very important, especially for swing trading, right? We then got the break out of the 180 SMA resistance, which was very, very good as well. So now we're trending above, uh, above both uh, both moving average resistance levels, right? We got the pullback on the 180 SMA 
SMA as well as the 50 SMA. We confirm those levels as supports, and now we're breaking out to the upside, right? We're about to get a bullish cross here. We're actually in the process of getting a bullish cross. We see the 50 SMA crossing above the 180 SMA, which I absolutely love seeing as well. But the RSI right now, is showing it's a bit overbought, right? So ideally here, guys, I'm thinking Tesla would be a good entry point at around mid-230s, maybe even low 240s. It really depends on where this moving average ends up, um, you know, closing, not really closing out, but where it ends up popping to, right? Let's say this 50 SMA ends up doing something like that. We get the pullback on Tesla to about 235, maybe 240, and then we get a pop there, a hold there. I think this could be a very good entry point right around here at 238, 240. That'll bring the RSI down to a healthier spot, and we can ride the uptrend momentum there on Tesla, right? So overall, I'm liking what I'm seeing here on this 184 hour chart. So before we get off of Tesla here, we need to draw some resistance levels and some support levels to see where could we potentially be moving now. And now that I just drew out this channel, you guys can actually see that we actually broke a resistance at 240, which was a resistance back from the beginning of July in 2019. And it seems like we are in the process right now of pulling down to potentially retest this level. So this could actually be the entry point, guys, $240. That's the target right now that I'm looking at. If we hold that, start to pop up, I think there's a great potential, great potential that we could fill up to the next resistance, which we were at in the end of July as you guys can see here, July 24th is where we hit that high at about 265. So from 240 to 265, that's about an 8% margin of profit. We get the pull down at 240, that'll bring the RSI down. I think that could be a very, very good entry point. And of course, if I'm in Tesla, guys, with how volatile it is, I'm definitely going to be holding a pretty tight stop loss in that one. And if I'm up, if I'm profiting, right, let's say I'm holding it as a swing trade, I'm up 3%. 4%, whatever it may be over a span of a couple of days, I'm definitely going to be putting a trailing stop loss on that to protect my profits, right? And for those of you guys that don't know what a trailing stop loss is, let's say I'm in a stock, I'm up 5% on this particular stock, right? And I want to really just hold like a, a half a percent trailing stop loss on that so I protect my profits. What happens is, let's say the stock goes down from, or rather your profits go from 5% to 4.5%. Since you have that trailing stop loss, it's going to trigger that and it'll just liquidate your position and you'll really take your profits, right? That's kind of how it works. It's how you protect, how I personally protect, and I'm sure a lot of you guys do it out there as well, my profits when I'm up, especially on swing trades, right? Swing trading, it's super important to have a trailing stop loss, in my opinion, you know, if you want to protect those profits. So Tesla, I'm liking it. It's very, very bullish right now. All these technicals are pointing to um, further upside in my opinion. And you guys can see, you know, maybe we retest the 50 SMA on the 20-day, uh, one-hour chart. That could be a good entry point as well for Tesla. So let's break down some other stocks very quickly here, guys. NVIDIA is another one that I'm watching right now. You know, we got to pull down from 188 to 184 now. We're holding that 50 SMA on the hourly chart. Chart. This could be a nice little dip play on NVIDIA, um, you know, maybe from 184 up to 190. If we hit a higher high, that could be around, let's say, a 2 to 3% profit play there. Um, NVIDIA on the 184 hour. You guys can see, you know, ever since we did break 172 a couple of days ago, it's been extremely, extremely bullish. And it seems like we got rejected by the 186 level of resistance here. So we're in this channel from 186 to about 173. So if we break out of 186, rather, this could be a straight shot move to the low 190s, maybe even 193. But if we start to get that rejection again, we start to push down to the low 180. 80s. I'm not really going to be watching it to trade it there as a swing trade. I'm mostly going to be looking for it to pull down at that point, maybe back down to maybe 177 and to potentially hold that level before entering it um, at that point. So I really want to see 
what direction we pick, and that's going to really determine whether or not I'm going to trade NVIDIA here. So another stock I'm watching, let's take a look at Apple, guys. So Apple today, we talked about Apple in depth in yesterday's video. So if you guys want to see that video where I go over the iPhone, my really in-depth opinion on Apple, go check out the video I uploaded yesterday. But overall, the gist of it is Apple right now is trending between 215 and the all-time high at around $233. So we're kind of in the middle of this channel, which is putting us at a tricky spot right now for Apple. But I definitely think there is upwards momentum. Um, there's potential for us to pop up here to 230 even maybe tomorrow if the markets are green or maybe next week if the markets continue this rally, right? But let's say we don't gap up tomorrow. We may be coming back down to test 218, maybe even 215, which would put us on top of that 180 or 50 SMA rather here on the 90 day two hour chart, which honestly, I wouldn't complain about that because that would be a very good dip buy and we would be buying it at a lower price at the bottom of the channel, which in my opinion might even be a better deal than buying it up here at about 220 right so watch for the potential pull down the test on this 50 sma whether it's at 215 220 i definitely think that is uh, a possible move for apple so you guys is another one guys that i want to end this video off with on the 20-day, one-hour chart here, we can see that this 50 SMA is clearly acting as a resistance for you guys, which is why I didn't take a position in it today when I did have that little time window where I was, you know, trading on my phone, you know, coming into the computer very quickly to do my analysis in the middle of the day. I was watching you guys here, and I was thinking to myself, you know, if we break out, this could be a very good move from 21 maybe even up to around $23, but the fact that we didn't get that and the fact that I don't hold these overnight, right? These leveraged ETFs, I just didn't take a position on it. And uh, that's just me being honest with you guys. But once we do break this little downtrend that we're in, this little mini downtrend of lower highs, once we break this trend line that I just drew and that 50 SMA on the hourly chart, I definitely think you guys can fill up to $23. And for those of you guys that don't know, it trades based upon natural gas. And if natural gas starts to make that move back up to the resistance at 265, right? That's going to pop up you guys and give us a very good opportunity to trade that. So that's kind of what I'm watching today, guys. Those are my thoughts on the market. Again, I wasn't really active today, so let me know if I missed anything, any catalysts, any big economic events, trade war news, whatever it may be. Don't feel shy. Drop that down below in the comment section. So I appreciate you guys watching the video. It means a lot to me. Drop a like, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content from me. Again, drop a comment. Let me know any thoughts. I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Peace out.